So again, we're on the week uh, five review. We're looking at the uh, review pack on electric circuits. And we're on page 11 or 52. So consider that I'm gonna have the right to answer the following questions. So um, obviously we have a battery source and we have three different points and we have two bulbs. Um, just so you know, um, <clears throat> uh, this is, in series. Each light bulb acts as a resistor, just so you know. Um, and usually the charge will tend to flow out of the positive terminal. So our current, which we usually call um, I, It's flowing in that direction. So if four coulombs of charge flow past point A in two seconds, remember current is charge over time and the units are gonna be a coulombs per second. So Obviously our current's gonna be four coulombs over two seconds, or two coulombs per second, or say two amperes. That's the use amperes for um, current. So if that's gonna be true, then I expect the same thing for point B. That's because current is constant for a series, let me write that more neatly. For a series circuit. Current will be constant for a series, because it's kind of like, um, you know, velocity in a way, or like if you're looking at a water flowing through um, some channel, you know, it's just gonna keep flowing the same way all the way through. So you expect the same thing. So the answer is B for 52A. Um, and then you want to maintain the same ratio. So four coulombs charge flow, flow past point A in two seconds and two coulombs will flow past point B in one second. So you maintain the same ratio. So definitely A would be a choice for that one. So again, you want the same ratio. If four coulombs charge flow past point A in two seconds then blank, uh, well, then you would double to be C. Again, you want the ratio of coulombs per time to be the same. Uh, if four coulombs of charge flow past point in two seconds, then blank. Um, well, yeah, now we know the answer is eight. And for uh, point C, um, same thing. And point C is going to be the same thing. So hopefully that uh, all makes sense. Uh, and just so you know, you could find all these answers. <clears throat> um, let me actually get this here. Uh, if you were to go to the physics classroom, And then if you go down to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the review session. And I'll give you guys a direct link, so don't worry about that. But if you go to electrical, electric circuits, and go to that one. And again, you can see that, um, you know, we did get B for part A, A for part B, C for part C, A, A, and for F, I haven't done F yet. So I'm going to clear this. Um, F is asking, suppose the resistance light bulb located between points A and B is increased. So it means this light bulb is a higher resist resistance. This is cause the current. Well, if you have more resistance, not as much current is going to flow through. Remember the voltage, um, you know, is kind of, we're kind of stuck with where our voltage that is. So remember V equals IR. Um, 
So in that case, you're going to um, see the current decrease. Um, as a result. So um, if you do decide to increase the resistance, right, uh, will increase overall resistance circuit and cause the current for the entire circuit to decrease, that one. So that's kind of the case um, with that one. Um, we'll skip 53. Um, And let's look at 56 together. Uh, again, this is a uh, one in series. Um, and then I think we'll do um, 15 and 59 after that. <clears throat> okay, so 56. Now, electric potential, just so you know, uh, is the same thing as voltage, uh, what did I put my stylus, here it is. So same thing. Um, so here we have three resistors. We'll call this R1, R2, North. And we have all these different points here, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So, and they, each one has an identical resistance, as you're told. So you use the label. So the light potential at point A is the same as the light potential at which of the following points. Um, well, here's the thing, is that um, electro potential will, um, change once you get to each resistor. So voltage is split among all resistors, just so you know. Um, <clears throat> now, the first thing that we could probably take care of right away is the current. The current at point E is the same as the current at which the following points. Um, so it's going to be um, all the points. The current's constant all the way through. everywhere. But voltage will get split. Um, so this one's a little interesting because um, the voltage um, <clears throat> or the resistors are all the same um, same value at each resistor. Um, so it's a little confusing to say the electric potential at point A is the same as the potential at which the following points. Well, it definitely is going to be the same at B. I mean, there's not, not, not any difference there. Um, I mean, we do expect the voltage to drop when we get to each resistor. So let's say, for example, um, each resistor is 10 ohms. So then your total resistance, or REQ, remember if it's series, you just add them up, it's 30 ohms. Um, let's say the voltage is uh, 120 volts. And V equals IR. We know this. So 120 equals your current times 30. So current's four amperes all the way through. Um, but the voltage at each one is gonna be split. The voltage of the first one's gonna be 40 volts. That's because you're just doing 
4 times 10, V equals IR, and these will also each be 40 volts. So we do expect the voltage uh, to be the same for each resistor. So to save you know, the electro potential difference um, between point A and C and so forth, um, not 100% sure what they're trying to get out those questions. Let me, let me let's take a look at the answer because that one seems a little bit confusing to me. Uh, so this is number 56. Yeah, I mean, we were right about I, J, and K, it's everywhere. And definitely uh, point A and point B um, have the same other potential. C is D and E because they're in the same portion. F and G um, and H and I. Um, and electric potential difference. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if we're really going to be asking that. I think that's, just, that's a little bit confusing. So let's actually go back and let's look at 58, because that was one I really kind of care about as well as 59. Um, and then I'm going to have you guys try some problem solving problems um, over here. Yeah, like 71 is kind of a good one, as well as 72. So let me work out um, 58, 59. They'll have you guys do 71, 72. So there's 58 and 59. Uh, this is something we'll definitely have on our test, something like these problems here. So here, consider a diagram below of a series circuit. For each resistor, use arrows to indicate the two locations where one would have to tap with, mm, let's not worry about that. Uh, I just care about this part. That's what I really care about. So you have 120 volts, it's gonna flow through. There's a current, or a vehicle's IR. And it's gonna be, um, we, we need the equivalent resistance, which again is just adding up all the resistors because it's serious. So five plus 10 plus 15, so it's 30 ohms. And the voltage is 120. So is that funny? So the hypothetical example, just a few minutes ago, same, same situation. So four amperes, and that's gonna be the same all the way through. Remember, current stays constant in a series circuit. However, the voltage will change. And remember, vehicles IR. So for the first resistor, the voltage it will see, um, what will just be five times four. Or 20 volts. The second one will be 10 times four. Um, 40 volts. And the last one will be four times 15 or 15 ohms times four for the current. And all those will add up to 120 volts. They ship. So the voltage will not be constant. The actual will get split um, proportionally for each resistor. A parallel is a little different. <clears throat> so parallel, again, all I care about is the current and voltage readings. Uh, current does get split. First, you need the equivalent resistance. And remember, because it's in parallel, you actually have to do this. One over RAQ is one fifth plus one tenth plus one fifteenth. Your LCD in this case is going to be 30, just say so you no. Know. So you're gonna have six over 30 plus three over 30 plus two out of 30. That's 11 out of 30. So your equivalent resistance gets flipped, 30 out of 11. Which is about 2.73. So that's your equivalent resistance. So, <clears throat> And by the way, the voltage will stay the same. So voltage is constant for parallel. For a parallel circuit. But you're already gonna see um, a change in the um, current. So initially the current is going to be um, 120 
equals I times 2.73. So if I divide that, so initially my current is 44 amps. But we'll get split. And it kind of like it's a fork in the road. So your current's right there, and it's got to split among all those resistors. Uh, and it will split proportionally. <clears throat> so again, uh, if your voltage is 120 for each of these three resistors, um, you simply just do, uh, you know, current is voltage divided by resistance. So you take the voltage and divide by the resistance. So 120 divided by five, that's gonna be 24 amps. So that gets a bit more because it's not as you know, resistive to flow of electricity. 120 divided by 10 is 12. And 120 divided by 15 is eight. Notice how all three of these add up to 44, and they should. And that's how you would split it. <clears throat> so again, uh, you gotta calculate the equivalent resistance. If it's series, just add them up. If it's uh, parallel, you do the reciprocals, and then you have to flip back to get the equivalent resistance. From the equivalent resistance, you can get the total current, uh, which is good to know, because all the individual currents will have to add up to that number. But the calculate the individual currents, take the voltage, which is constant for each resistor, and divide it by the resistance. Whereas over here, the current's constant, and you're in series, so you just multiply the current by the resistor, and that gives you the voltage at each of those locations. And all those voltages should add up to the total voltage. So let's practice that, because I think you guys do need some practice there. Um, I'm gonna go all the way down to 71 and 72. Those are the last two problems here. So you have four resistors of those values in series for a 12 volt battery. The turn of the current voltage drop across each resistor. Same thing, but now they're in parallel. So let me actually give you guys diagrams too, that you guys can actually take a picture. So for 71, I'll do it right here. 72, I'll do it right there. So again, you have your voltage source. Okay, it's kind of did a crappy job drawing it, but that's okay. 12 volt battery. Two ohms, five ohms, 12 ohms, and 15 ohms. And so we will need, um, you know, this is you know, R1, R2, R3, and R4. So obviously R1 is two ohms, R2 is five ohms, R3 is 12 ohms, R4 is 15 ohms. So you will need V1 and A1 for each. So I need V1 and A1. Sorry, V1, I1, then V2 and I2, and so forth. For 72, the circuit's going to look like this. You have a 12 volt battery, but then the current gets split like crazy. So, two ohms, five ohms, 12 ohms, and 15 ohms. So current will get split, but we will want um, voltage one, I1, voltage two, I2, and so forth. So <clears throat> I'll put you guys in groups. Um, should take you about eight minutes or so. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But something like this, I'll probably put on our test. And then we'll come back and look at some other problems and we'll wrap it up for today. So I'll stop the recording.